And so we prepare for the second medal event of the day here in Falun and the Nordic World Championships. And it is the women's ski jumping coming up next. Only the fourth time this event has been part of the World Championship program. And so a very, very big occasion. And what an exciting event we're going to have. Of course, Sara Takanashi desperate to get revenge for not even getting a medal in the Olympic Games. We've got Karina Vogt, who is, of course, the Olympic champion. She's in action has had a pretty good season lying third in the rankings and Daniela Irashko Stoltz is she the favorite having won five World Cups already this year is best and we'll see how she gets on so that's uh, all from the intro it's time now to hand over to David Goldstrom who's in the Eurosport commentary box all yours David Thanks very much, Patrick, and uh, good evening as it is now here in Falun for this women's gold medal competition. The first time they contested this competition, of course, was in the Nordic Ski World Championships of 2009 when Lindsay Van of the United States took the title. Daniela Irashko, who's in tonight's competition, she was the champion in 2011 in Oslo. And then Sarah Hendrickson, she was the one for the United States who regained the title in Val di Fiemme. We're on the normal hill, and here you can see the inclination angle there, 10.5 degrees on that medium length uh, table and down to the upper red line which is at 90 meters the hill size at 100 it's two points per meter as a bonus for every meter calculation line and it's two meters uh, deduction for every meter you fall short of that. There are your five judges marking out of 20. Usual rules, highest and lowest discarded. The other three marks added together along with the um, distance points to give you a total number of points. Key men tonight, well, as ever, it'll be uh, Chika Yoshida, who is actually the race director, not Walter Hofer. Chika, who uh, looks after the women's circuit, uh, assisted by uh, Borek Sedlak, who does the equivalent job on the women's circuit, as Miran Tepes does, and Aga Baszkowska of Poland, who is the equivalent to Sepp Gratzer, the feast police, who'll be checking the skis and the suits as you see the starting order. Order. 13 uh, countries and the best ranked towards the end of the uh, competition and the end of the first round. So there you have the final competitors. So almost uh, set to go here and just waiting for the jury to determine which gate. It looks as if it's going to be 25 and of course 40 aspirants and that will be reduced to 30 for the final and decisive round. So it's the first of the Chinese uh, competitors. This is Li Shui Yao, Chinese who used to be coached by Jochen Dannenberg. And front wind conditions. And quite a way short of the uh, calculation line. A little bit of back wind coming in now, and you can see there 2.2. So that is a meter of compensation. All day we've had front wind, but now it's uh, back wind as we see the first of the Finnish challengers. This is uh, Susanna Forstrom from uh, Lati. Qualification yesterday was won by the Canadian Taylor Henrik in a new hill record for the women of 92 meters. Back wind prevailing now for the Finn. And never really uh, got to grips with that 
15s or 16s for style to be honest and 71.5 and that does not bode well to advance in the competition for her this hill uh, it's had some modification but not to the extent of the big hill alongside but the certainly the outrun areas here have been redeveloped and if you talk to a lot of the athletes who were here in 1993 the last time that uh, Fallon hosted the Nordic Ski World Championships they'll tell you that one of the characteristics that changed is the height over the knoll once upon a time you used to have a lot of height but as you can see it's much more friendly now and Anna Odin uh, Ström 81 and a half meters so 81 and a half meters puts her in terms of distance of course into first place Blaskova for the Czech Republic Stillstrom in the early lead, but that was very much two-footed by Chang of uh, China, German Democratic Republic, a real achiever. He was coaching the Chinese women, and uh, they did appear in Lillehammer in the World Cup competitions earlier in the season, but uh, since then, we haven't seen much of them until now. And now uh, this is uh, Dola Jalova for the Czech Republic, just 20 years of age. Inside the top 30 a couple of years ago in the World Championships and just on the right side of that virtual green line. You really need a platform from which to attack in the second round here. And Dola Jalova who this year 11th her best place in the world cup coming into these championships and a little deduction there means that Norway's uh, Sturm is still leading the competition bib seven for anastasia gladysheva and gladysheva who was in Val di Fiemme in 28th place and that is short again of that 16s possibly a 15 there and eight third place at the moment so now Elena Rungaldier Elena Rungaldier uh, of Italy, silver medal in Oslo at the World Championships. And I don't think there's any harm done there, but 83 and a half meters. And the wind at the moment, it really is uh, turning all the time, but it's relatively soft at less than a meter per second. And it's coming from the southeast where the big wind protection map, Annette, is helping. And she goes into second place. You can see that front wind there, 2.4 points. And that sort of takes a meter or so just off her score. Rungaldier from the Gruden Valley. And they've just seen uh, success, of course, from Alessandro uh, Pitin.
wearing nine. This is Evelyn Insam, also from Italy, fit in the Olympic Games last year. And they're all peppering around about the 80 meter mark. Style. This will be amongst the 16s, I would say. And there it is, and down to fourth place. But to put things in perspective, in fourth place, she's 8.7 points behind Sturm of Norway, which puts her a little bit more than four metres off the lead. Gida Enger, Norway, to challenge her teammates. And that's a reasonable challenge. Gida. Who was also in Sochi but 84 meters now the distance moves up that's the longest so far and second place and that's because of the front wind deduction Gita Enger into second place just 0.4 of a point so that's around 25 centimeters in distance behind Sturm and now the much more experienced Abby Hughes from the United States get to make a mark at a big championship competition and the ski split on the landing it wasn't that she qualifies for the second round sixth place at the moment but sixth place is five meters off the lead already and from one American, we move to another, and a debutante, uh, Tara Geraghty Motes. Here she is, and Tara, just 21 years of age, 12th in qualification just yesterday. And that is a good effort there from uh, Tara. Lots of parents and family and friends here, 85 meters. And this should be around, I would hope, the 17s, although when you look at that uh, landing again, it was a slid telemark. And so they've been pretty strict there, 16 out of a possible 20 from the majority of the judges. But she takes the lead, USA in front. meters the French actually not the force they used to be Julia Claire is probably the best athlete in the women's division at the moment and even Colleen Mattel a former world and Olympic uh, medalist is not so far showing the very best of her form 25 Chiara Herzl who's recently won a bronze medal at the juniors and this is the distinctive approach from Julia Kekkonen, Finland. So, nobody near the calculation line at the moment, 85 meters. Same as Gareth Emoch for the United States. And they're a little backwind compensation as opposed to the front wind deduction. And Kekkonen goes into the lead. Julia Kekkonen. A broken collarbone a wee while ago, but well over that particular injury, just 20 years of age. And now Katya Pozen. Pozen for Slovenia, who've got a really good group of athletes in the women's world of ski jumping and the telemark was pretty good there that's all about the distance at the moment 83 but there during the flight phase you could see that the skis were not even and that's going to cost her a couple of points and third place only two athletes, Julia Kekkonen and Gareth Motes of the United States, with more than 100 points, which is our 
threshold of respectability. And you can see the sort of camaraderie there is around the warm-up area amongst all of these young women. They're really fired up. This, their fourth World Championships and 16 Iwabushi for Japan. From Nagano, 21 years of age and just outside the top 20 in their World Cup season rankings coming into today. Backwind competitions didn't get that right. And you could see those ski tips coming up very tight into her face. Literally uh, not much more than a meter per second in any one of the seven measurement sections. And so Yurik Aiken of Finland, Gerriti Motes and Poznan, then Ström and Enger and Sara Takanashi making her way to what she hopes will be a world championship gold medal. Mum and dad are here and here's her teammate uh, Yuka Seto. Seventh just recently out in Almaty in Kazakhstan in the junior worlds. First senior world championship for this young woman. Oh, and just uh, active there to save the day. It's true to say that in the Women's World Cup, it's really had uh, two or three dominant figures. Sarah Hendrickson there wearing the bib for the defending world champion. Does allow a country an extra place in the starting this and now Uli Graysler. Few have her experience. She was the silver medalist back in 2009 in Liberets behind Lindsay Van, the first ever women's world champion. Front win, takeoff was not bad, but at the end of the day, Uli Graysler is gonna be unhappy with this. That's opened up early. And that's the reason why she didn't get the distance that she was looking for, mid-80s nonetheless, but wasn't by any means her best effort. And a breath of back when she almost escapes there, 99.2 points into third place. And now the French woman, uh, Colin Mattel, or Colleen Mattel, we first uh, got to know her when she was a 15-year-old. And she was third in Oslo in the World Championships of 2011 and a bronze medalist on the Sochi Hill last year when Karina Vogt was the champion. Talking to uh, one or two of the uh, French, they highlight the fact that uh, physically, a lot of these women between the ages of 15 to 18 and 19, they are changing and growing. And I think our coach, uh, Frederick Zors, will be a little bit disappointed with this. Nine meters off the calculation line. And, well, the shake of the head really says it uh, all. Julia Claire now, if there is to be a French medalist, then it probably is going to be this next woman. Julia, who was top 20 at the Olympic Games, just getting ready to uh, slide out. Finland with the advantage, but I'm sure that leaderboard is going to change pretty soon. Not been in the top 10 so far this season, so... That's pretty good. Gets a ripple of applause from the spectators. Sadly, not as many spectators as I would have wished, and 89 metres gets within a metre of the calculation line, and this is going to put Julia into the lead. And the skis are pretty steady, the telemark is 
not bad. She was a little back on her heels there. But nonetheless, I think it's worth uh, high 17s on 18. And 18 is there at 108.6. And now three women with 100 points or more. France lead. So, Julia Claire to be followed by Eva Logar of Slovenia. How frustrating it was for her in Oslo in 2011. Finished in uh, fourth place. The Slovenian women coached by uh, Stane Baloch and given that she makes it through to the next phase she's going to be going rather earlier than she would have hoped and you just see there a little bit of uh, zest has gone out of her wind absolutely quiet and it is I would say now a majority backwind but pretty quiet and it's coming from the southeast so the net is actually doing its job splendidly at the moment to protect the women. Now from St. Petersburg, Sofia Tikhonova, the junior world champion of this season. That gives her a certain opportunity. I think this is going to be good enough to get her into the second round as we stand. 96 and a half meters. And just a little bit of front wind uh, deduction. Relatively inexperienced, 16 years of age. Uh, Matias Triplat from Slovenia working with the Russian coaches and into second place 3.5 points off the lead so that is less than two meters so that's really good for the young Russian Julia Claire from Tikhonova of Russia then Kikanen of Finland and then Gerrit Motes for the United States and Jessica Jerome now That's competitive, and Jessica in the reasonably high 80s there. Similar to Tikhonova, as you can see, 86 and a half. Never won a individual World Cup competition. She's been second on one occasion. In Sochi, she finished in the top 10, and goes in behind Julia Claire, but there's nothing between Jerome and Tikhonova now in second and third. So uh, Julian Seifert separated or celebrated, I should say, her 24th birthday, or will probably do so today if she can get a decent result and that's a good start that is a good start by uh, Julian Seifert of Germany has just found form in the last couple of weekends with competitions in Raznov in Romania and Lubno where she's posted a couple of fifth place uh, positions that's Taylor Henrik there of Canada into the lead the woman who won the qualification yesterday and set a new hill record of 92 meters has competed uh, very sparingly and that's largely due to the fact that uh, all the Canadians have had to uh, pay their own way it's been the bank of mum and dad for most of the Canadians both in the men's and the women's division but that's pleasing Canada take the lead from France USA in third place and Kiara Herzl now bronze medalist behind Tikhonova in the junior worlds and the backwind just intensifying and 
putting us outside the corridor of tolerance. Julian Seyfarth, who I mentioned, uh, will be next, actually. The birthday girl of yesterday. So, Herzl. Well, that might be in the area of uh, 87 meters. 88 and a half, so a little better. But from a point of view of style, despite the fact that she's got the distance here, you can see the instability, and that'll knock a couple of points off. Although I'd hope that she would still stay with, say, 17s. But you can see for yourself they're down to 16 and a half. And that's where those star marks make a real difference. She's 8.8 .8 points off the lead. And she got four more points instead of being four meters behind. She would now be just two behind. So here is the birthday girl of yesterday. Unfortunately, that isn't as competitive as we were looking for. Taylor Hendrick of uh, Canada leading the way, based out of uh, Calgary. And uh, Taylor, who produced her best ever result in the World Cup this season, a third place finish in Oberstdorf. Really flying the flag for the Canadians. Many of you might have remember, remembered Alexander Pretorius, who was jumping for Canada so successfully before the Olympic Games, but then, like Sarah Hendrickson of the United States, sustained a cruciate knee ligament uh, injury, which ultimately forced her out of the sport, so sadly. Mara Nunby, whose home is Lillehammer, and she's been in pretty good form the last weekend in Lubno, just missing the podium narrowly. And that's pretty good. Sixth place, 104 points, and five to six metres to find. Not easy when the gaps or the margins open up like that on this size of hill. For Germany, uh, Katarina Altus, another athlete based out of Oberstdorf. So only uh, Taylor Henrik in uh, bonus point territory, 90 and a half meters. And she has a three meter advantage over Julia Kerr of France and a four meter advantage over Christina Hörsel of Austria. Five meter advantage over Jessica Jerome of the United States, and then Tikhonova of Russia, also five meters behind Taylor Henrik at this particular moment. So, Linya, also uh, from Lillehammer, in her 30s, early 30s, but she's been a great servant to the Norwegian team, ninth in the world, ninth in Sochi last year. And that little wobble came after the outrun line, so that should be ignored. And one, two marks of 17, but the star judges are being really strict. 
So, 11 to come. And next up, it's going to be Russia's Irina Avakomova. Irina Avakomova is probably the number one ranked uh, Russian. Although I must say, uh, Tikhonova has been catching the headlines. Avakomova, only 23 years of age, performed in Sochi, where she finished in 16th place. And she was 13th two years ago in Val de Fieme. She's got that little bit more experience than uh, Tikhonova. A World Cup winner last season. And that's getting up in the high 80s there. And Russia now with quite possibly two in the top five. Backwind conversation of about a metre should help her cause. The instability on the landing uh, won't, but that was really the only big problem. And third place. So uh, Canada, France, Russia, Austria, United States, France occupy those top six places. So uh, this is the situation with the top 10 to come. So if you're in the first 20, you now know that you've got a place in the final and decisive medal round. So Michaela Dolezhalova there, 83 meters, 91.2 points. That is the score to keep in your mind now. And the likes of Yuka Seto, Lia Lamar, and perhaps Evelyn Insam, they now need, out of the top 10, at least three to fail to let them into the second round. But Taylor here, nice, really good aerodynamic tuck. The timing was excellent. She was quickly into the flight place. Greg Olinsig there, the Canadian coach, and comes in to a touchdown. And I've seen better landings from her, but nonetheless, uh, that will do nicely. And Canada with the advantage, with the defending world champion about to take her turn. 18 months ago, Sarah Hendrickson sustained a cruciate knee ligament when over jumping on the big hill in Obersdorf. She came back to compete in Sochi, but arguably that was still a bit too early. Vasa Baich there, the civilian who has take over, taken over coaching the Americans from Paolo Bernardi with a little shake of his head. Doesn't like the backwind, doesn't like the strong backwind. But this woman at the height of her powers when she was winning the title would be consistently going over 100 meters. And more like 86, 87 meters there. Two podium finishes last weekend, indicating an outside chance of a medal, 87 meters, but arguably better style than one or two, holds that together, that final phase. But into second place, and backwind misfortune turns into backwind fortune because she gets three meters of compensation and that puts her up into second place just two meters behind taylor hendrick so it's all north america at the moment canada and then the united states julia claire from france in third ahead of avakamova and at the moment uh, all those outside the top 20 are looking a little forlorn. Now, Nita Englund, a real good find for the Americans, just 22, hails from uh, Steamboat Springs. Mid 80s. Nita, who's never been to a senior world championship, 86 and a half, so not too bad. And I would just looking at this on reflection, 
I would have hoped that the style judges would have viewed this as worthy of 17s, but then again, you see the touchdown and one or two not convinced about the telemark. So sixth place. Three Americans in the top seven at the moment. So Eva Pinkelnig from Dornbin in Austria. Very close to the border with Switzerland and Liechtenstein in the Vorarlberg. Ten top ten finishes this season. Good power. And that's not too bad. That is getting up pretty close to 90 meters. It isn't into bonus point territory, but it's a decent effort here. 89 meters and held this together. Uh, there's a 16 coming up from uh, Merko Hunefeld from Germany, which I think is out of order. All the other judges are 17 and a half. To be a, a point and a half away is a little bit embarrassing. But that mark is discarded and up into second place behind Taylor Henrik and Hendrickson drops to third place. But still five to come. And it's uh, Yuki Ito. These are the women who are in the top five positions in the World Cup competition, so you would expect them to be truly competitive. Best 30, of course, will go in reverse order. So, Maya Vitic and Eva Pinkelnig to uh, come next, actually. Pretty good for the Austrian. 89 meters and just looking at the win compensation, she's got three points coming her way, which is worth a meter and a half. So this is competitive and it's gonna push her up into the podium positions, I would say. to uh, second place, less than a meter behind Henrik. Yuka Ito next to go from the North Island, Hokkaido. And fifth in the World Cup series, then it's Bella Rogel who won the very first World Cup of the season, then the Olympic champion, Karina Vogt, and then Saura Takanashi, the winner of her last three World Cup competitions and the silver medalist back in the World Championships of 2013 behind Sarah Hendrickson. And finally, the best women, best woman ski jumper of the season so far, Daniela Irashko Stoltz, looking to recapture the title that she won in 2011. So, Yuki Ito. And that challenges Taylor Henrik for the lead. 89 meters, but a meter of backwind compensation. And the star marks are pretty good. Three marks of 18, that's gonna get her ever closer to Taylor Henrik. And 
Yuka Ito, second place, 113.9. Uh, but just 1.6 points off the lead. Canada and then Japan and Austria third and fourth. Pickelnig and Siefriedsberger and then Hendrickson in fifth place. The defending champion and now Spela Rogel. Started the season so well. 11 top 10 finishes as well as the victory in Lillehammer. Three other podium finishes in third place. Well, she'll certainly qualify, but she'll have work to do in the second round, and she's going to have to raise her game. Three and a half meters uh, in distance away from the current leader. But saving grace, look at the back wind compensation. Almost six points, that's three meters. That brings her up to fifth place, and Spella is less than two meters off the lead. So, you can see it's Quarton, the green light is on, so she has to go within those 10 seconds. That's on the 90-meter mark, and Karina Rock, the Olympic champion, does rise to the occasion. And the touchdown was good, 91 and a half meters, a meter further than uh, Taylor Henrik. And with four marks of 18 coming up from the star judges, Annie Bauer's happy, and the Olympic champion is about to take the advantage. First place, surely. Indeed, 119.2, and that is about a metre and three quarters ahead of Canada's Taylor Henrik. Yuki Ito in third place for Japan, and now uh, Takanashi, this stunning star who the other day here in training mustered the attention of what well, it looked like close to 200 Japanese journalists. I'm sure it wasn't quite that much, but there was this tiny figure in the middle of all the enthusiasts. And I must say, she handles it pretty well, the pressure at the moment. Five wins this season. The last three have all gone to her ahead of her great rival, Irashko Stoltz, who will follow her. Back wind just calmer at the moment, big opportunity. Really quick into the flying position, but short of 90 meters. And the telemark landing, that again has found her out. She's just on the 90 meter line, but have a look at this. That is not well. Some people would say it was, others would say it's not, but the majority of the judges say no telemark landing, and that has cost her dearly. Down with almost four meters of deficit going into the second round, but now uh, Daniela Irashko Stoltz recovered from that meniscus injury after the Olympic Games in which she finished in the silver medal position. Coached by uh, Andy Felder, one of the really top coaches himself, a ski flying world champion back in 86 and a world big hill champion in 1987. And Daniela, right at the height of her powers, And that's into the 90 meter zone. And she knows that she's right up there. Takanashi is struggling. 92 and a half meters. The longest effort of the first round. And eclipses the Olympic champion by a meter. And I doubt there'll be any mark lower than 18 for Daniela. And. Andy Felder really delighted. 
and Austria have the advantage at the halfway stage and the advantage oh it's uh, just shy of two meters ahead of the Olympic champion Kanina Vogt and just over three meters clear of Taylor Henrik of Canada who won yesterday's qualification Ito is fourth for Japan and she's the best of her country and then Pinkelnig who's having a great season for Austria Austria who got three athletes in the top six at the moment and then the best of the Slovenian Spella Rogel but the real uh, test here is are you in the top 30 to go into the second round and where are you because in 30th place it's Michaela Dolajelova and so Yuka Seto of Japan misses out but here is the situation at halfway Austria the World Cup leader from the Olympic champion the former world champion of course Daniela Irashko Stoltz Taylor Henrik on her way perhaps to a, a lifetime best in terms of championships and then you come down here but look at the differential in points here 102 points compared to the leaders 122 that's uh, 20 points that's 10 meters difference between the top 20 and then uh, another five pretty well five down to uh, Dolla Shalova for the uh, 30th place so the real disappointment and the real surprise is the disappointing performance of Sara Takanashi who is going to have to produce a hill record 